Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl Games video. Today we're taking a look at a mono black sacrifice deck with an artifact sub theme as our commander is Ashnod Flash Mechanist, a 1 mana 1 1 with Death Touch, and whenever Ashnod attacks, we may sacrifice another creature. If we do, create a tapped Power Stone token that can tap for 1 colorless, and that mana cannot be spent to cast non artifact spells. So the top end of this deck is going to consist of artifacts, which we can still ramp into with our Power Stone tokens, and we also have a various activated abilities that the Power Stones can help with. And then we can also pay 5 mana, which is an ability we can maybe spend those Power Stones to activate, exile a creature card from our graveyard to create a tapped 3-3 colorless zombie artifact creature token. I'll be honest, haven't made a ton of 3-3 zombies yet, but that's also because a lot of our creatures are recursive creatures that we can keep getting back from the graveyard over and over again, so we don't necessarily want to exile them, but every now and then you'll end up with a few creatures that you don't mind exiling, and then this will make for an extra mana sink. And then of course Death Touch means that the opponent won't be able to block Ash not profitably, at least not early on, so this can often get a few attacks in, and then we'll have plenty of creatures to sacrifice, that's the largest category of this deck as you can see, all these sacrifice fodder type creatures that we can play early, sacrifice, make a power stone, and then later in the game if Ash not ends up trading for an opposing creature that's fine, we also have a few ways to maybe make Ash not unblockable so it can keep attacking with Thieves Tools or Key to the City, which we'll get to in a little bit. First we'll take a look at our mana acceleration. We have a Mox Amber, which makes a lot of sense with a 1 mana commander, as we'll have a cheap legendary creature to enable it to make black mana right away. There's Dark Ritual, can always lead to some fun starts. Arcane Signet still makes sense to include, since we can play turn 1 Ashnod, turn 2 Signet, still play 1 mana Sacrifice Fodder creature, and then keep going. We wouldn't be able to do the same with some of the other 2 mana ramp artifacts. Then Ashnod's Altar, also very fitting here, can sacrifice a creature at any point to add double colorless, so that can also set up some explosive starts. There's Hedron Archive, which we can ramp into relatively early thanks to the Power Stone tokens, can tap for double colorless, and then we can also later sacrifice it for extra cards. There's Solemn, which is also very synergistic as an artifact creature, can use our Power Stones to cast it and then maybe sacrifice it to Ashnod, both finding an extra swamp and drawing a card in the process. And then Gilded Lotus, another good ramp artifact that can make 3 mana right away. And then the next section are the creatures that we don't mind sacrificing. Clay Revenant, a 1-2 enter stabbed. For 2 and a black we can return it from our graveyard to our hand. So this is an artifact that we can cast using Power Stones, but it also has an activated ability, so that's another way we can spend our Power Stone mana. There's a Dread Wanderer, a 2-1, also enter stabbed. And this one we can return straight to the battlefield if we have one or fewer cards in hand. Gutter Bones, a 2-1 that also enters tapped and this one for one and a black we can return from our graveyard to our hand if the opponent lost life this turn. Nessa Chambler a 1-1 one, one that will leave behind a squirrel token when it dies so it provides two bodies to sacrifice to Ashnod's ability. Persistent Specimen a 1-1 one, one that for two and a black we can return straight to the battlefield so it's even better than a clay revenant in that aspect. And then the Sanitarium Skeleton will also come back to our hand so we can replay it. The upside here is that we can block with it right away but still usually prefer the cheap cheaper versions like Persistent Specimen, and then a Shambling Gas can leave behind a treasure token or give a creature minus one minus one when it dies. Then we go up to two mana, where we have the new Transmogrant, which if the opponent is playing a lot of non-basic lands, we can return from our graveyard to the battlefield for just a double black, and then it also enters with an extra plus one plus one counter on it, but it cannot block, so it will be a 4-2 that cannot block, but we're still happy to sacrifice it to Ashnod. There's Carrier Thrall, a 2-1 that will leave behind a 1-1 Scion token, that can also be sacrificed to add an extra colorless. We've got the Augur, which will draw a card when it enters, and we can also return it for 4 mana from our graveyard to our hand. And then Doom Dissenter, 1-1 one, one, that leaves behind a zombie token when it dies. There's Jadar, that will make an extra decayed zombie at the beginning of our end step. So not ideal to play on turn 2, since we don't want to sacrifice Jadar himself, but we're happy to sacrifice the zombie tokens later on. 
and then a reassembling skeleton, the cheapest one to get back into play for just one on a black from our graveyard, and then Ghost Rider makes a goat token that we don't mind sacrificing, and then can also sacrifice creatures to scry, and can also escape it out of the graveyard if it's full enough. And then Hangerback Walker is both an early enabler, as a creature that when it dies leaves behind Thopter tokens, but in the late game we can sink a ton of mana into it, so it can also be a good mana sink for all those power stones. And then the next section is removal, spot removal, where we have bone shards, which requires us to either discard a card or sacrifice a creature to destroy a creature or a planeswalker for just one mana. So that's another great use of those sacrifice fodder creatures. And then both Eaten Alive and Spark Harvest give us the option to cast it for five mana if we don't want to sacrifice a creature. Spark Harvest destroys, whereas Eaten Alive exiles. And then Fatal Push can also enable Revolt very easily in this deck to destroy a creature at instant speed. Got Feed the Swarm as an answer to enchantments, which Black struggles with, and then go for the Throat and Infernal Grasp as more instant speed spot removal. Then the next section is card draw effects, where we have Village Rides as well as a Deadly Dispute, can sacrifice a creature to draw to. And then Warlock class we can play as early as turn 2 alongside a cheap creature, and then we'll start draining the opponent as our creatures die, can level it up to level 2 to draw an extra card, and then eventually can double our damage output on level 3, and these are all activated abilities, so great use of our Power Stone tokens. The Crown is another great source of card advantage, can equip a creature for just a single black, giving it 2 extra power, and whenever it dies we get to draw a card, so we can just equip a creature that we're about to sacrifice to Ashnod to get an extra card out of it. We've got the Diabolic Intent as a powerful tutor effect, just have to sacrifice a creature as an additional cost, which is not a problem in this deck, and then we can tutor up our powerful curve toppers, like maybe a Portal to Phyrexia, or a Bolas Citadel can also be incredibly powerful in a deck like this. Tomb of Legends is another card that shines alongside a cheap commander, since we can easily keep attacking to put extra counters on it, and extra counters means extra cards. Then the Connections and Phyrexian Arena are enchantments that cost a bit of life, but will turn into a lot of extra card advantage, and in the case of Connections, maybe Treasure Tokens and Shapeshifters as well. There's Midnight Reaper as well as Opportunist, which can turn dead creatures into extra cards. And Skullport Merchant is joined by a treasure token, can sacrifice both treasures and creatures to draw cards. And then we have a few fun legendary creatures, including Braids, which can also sacrifice an artifact each turn, and if the opponent cannot do the same, they will lose two life and we get to draw a card. There's Henrika, which can force each player to sacrifice a creature, can also draw a card, and maybe transform into a 3-4 with Flying, Death Touch, and Life Link. We've got a Rankle, which can also force the opponent to sacrifice a creature if it connects, can also draw cards and make each player discard. And then Yawgmoth can also turn all our small sacrifice fodder creatures into extra cards, while maybe shrinking down opposing creatures in the process. And then we have a few more utility artifacts, including Thief's Tools to make a creature with power 3 or less unblockable, as well as Key to the City. We can also use this as a way to loot as we maybe discard a card, like one of our many creatures that we can return from the graveyard to our hand, and then pay 2 mana in our upkeep to draw an extra card, so that can also provide a bit of extra card advantage in addition to making Ash not unblockable if we want to keep attacking with it. There's a Weatherlight Completed, which lets us scry whenever a creature dies, eventually turning into a 5-5 five, five flyer and not too difficult to accomplish in this deck. And then the Nettle Cyst is also great since we can cast it using our Power Stone mana as a very large creature most of the time since we'll have plenty of artifacts to grow it. It comes attached to a Germ token which we can maybe still sacrifice to Ashnod and still have the Nettle Cyst left over to grow future creatures. And then we get to the more exciting category, which are the expensive artifacts that we're hoping to ramp into, including Noxious Gearhulk as a 5-4 with Menace that can destroy an opposing creature, gaining life equal to its toughness. There's Bolas the Citadel as an awesome source of card advantage. We've got Caged Sun as another new addition, which shines in any monocolored deck, doubling our mana as well as giving our creatures plus one plus one. God Pharaoh's statue will slow down the opponent, making all their spells too more expensive. Immortal Sun will draw extra cards, shuts down all planeswalkers since we don't have any in the deck ourselves, and then can also give us a discount as well as pump our creatures. Wormcoil Engine can maybe gain some life back after taking a lot of damage of some of our enchantments, and if it does get destroyed, we'll still have those two 3-3 three, three worms left over, one with Death Touch, one with Life Link, and then the Flesh Gorger, another great Life Linker that can be played for 3 mana or 7 mana. Herald of Anguish has Improvise, so we can tap our artifacts to help pay for it, so we can also cast it relatively early. We'll force the opponent to discard each turn, and has a nice activated ability where we can sacrifice an artifact to give a creature minus 2 minus 2 until end of turn. 
God Pharaoh's Gift can return our creatures in the form of 4-4 zombies with haste, so that can also reanimate some of our smaller sacrifice creatures. And then the Cityscape Leveler, a great curve topper, can destroy an opposing non-land permanent when we cast it and whenever it attacks, also has unearth for 8 mana. Then a Sundering Titan, a nice way to blow up some basic lands, so ideally the opponent has their own swamp in play, so we don't have to take out our own basic with it, but otherwise it's still usually an advantage for us, since we'll be able to ramp it out early, and can be very punishing against multicolor decks. And then at the Portal to Phyrexia, another nice curve topper, that can make the opponent sacrifice 3 creatures, and will reanimate a creature from any graveyard, turn after turn. And then the mana base has a few goodies, a couple colorless utility lands, Mutavolt as a creature land, there's also Crawling Barons as a nice mana sink for those Power Stone tokens to keep putting more counters onto it, Art of Raska as another card draw engine, the Hall can make more Power Stones, Inventor's Fair can easily be enabled to maybe gain some life back and eventually we can sacrifice it to tutor up any artifact and put it in our hand, and then the Labyrinth can also maybe soak up some damage from opposing creatures by removing them from combat. Then we've got 30 basic swamps, great at enabling our Cabal Stronghold, which can generate extra mana as soon as we have 5 or more swamps in play. Then there's a Castle as another source of card advantage, and Fraxian Tower of course also makes a lot of sense, as we can sacrifice some of our smaller creatures to add double black. So yeah, that's our mono black Ashnaught deck, let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, facing the Clockmaker, and uh, yeah, our hand's got potential. Especially with a turn one Dark Ritual. And I may actually go for it right now, so we can play Tome. And then play our commander afterwards. Pick up extra counters. Next turn play Skeleton and draw with Tome. Keep attacking, making more mana. Okay. Possible playing strongholds would have been better in case we string together a ton of swamps. Next turn we can bring back skeleton. And then wanna try and get our weather lights going as soon as possible. Arcane signets is also an option here. Play signets, can still get back skeleton. Caravan for a bit of ramp. And we can cast an Immortal Sun right now if we wanted to. Seems fine while the opponent's mostly tapped out. That resolves. Okay. Well, that was a lovely start. All thanks to Turn 1 Dark Ritual. Got a tome of four counters, so that's a ton of extra card draw. Gotta cash it in before the opponent casts a reverse rebuke to bounce it all, I guess. And there's a clockmaker. So it makes a midnight clock, which can quickly get more counters. Ooh, Sundering Titan. Opponent's got Swamp and Islands, so yeah, count me in. Probably could have gotten away with attacking first. Opponent considers. And let's destroy those lands. Can use our tower to Put more counters on our weather lights. But our opponent's still not out of the game thanks to all that artifact mana. I 
Herald of Anguish we can cast for pretty cheap thanks to Improvise. So, yeah, we have definitely a lot of possibilities here. So, step one, play Weatherlight Completed, which could also use a Power Stone. Then we'll attack. Opponent commits our Immortal Sun. Fair enough. So now things get a bit more expensive. So if I play a Skeleton, can sacrifice it to Phyrexian Tower for double black. And connections is fine, but would prefer a land at this point, I think. And then we can still play Herald of Anguish. So that seems fine. Opponent will have to discard. And next turn we get to replay our Immortal Sun. Dispel. Another relatively new addition. So we could play Skeleton, sacrifice it to Tower, so we can scry with Weather Lights, and it's essentially Village Rights can go to the bottom. Let's draw with Tomb. And a Fatal Push can go after Rusko. Opponent's going to discover in response. So we can smash. And then we'll get back a Skeleton end of turn. Didn't really feel like playing Immortal Sun into all that open mana, since you were likely holding a counterspell. So now the main card we don't want to see is like a River's Rebuke. Displacer Kitten. Okay, so let's see, Herald can take that out as soon as we get priority. And a time warp to take an extra turn. It's going to displace itself. All right, let's take out the kitten. And then sacrifice probably the power stone token. Kitten down. Opponent does get to take an extra turn. But they're facing two lethal threats. Can they find an answer? They can get a fresh hand with Midnight Clock, but that's not going to leave a lot of mana to do so. Our opponent goes for it. So what's next? A concession. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing a Johnny Sleeper Agent. And our hand has potential. Ashnod sacrifices the center. And then Altar can also ramp into an early statue. Turn one Elvish Mystic on the other side. Yeah, still down to attack into it. Doubt our opponent trades. But if they do, that's fine by me. Turn to Lanor Visionary, so a good start from the green-white deck. So we can play Weather Lights, and then next turn we'll still be able to play Godfarrow Statue, so there's no need to play Ashnod's Altar right now. And then attack. 
Can attack with both, but I'm gonna end up sacrificing the zombie. And don't need swamp on top since we have one in hand. Opponent took it. The Acacia's welcome for additional card draw and a pelt collector. Gets to draw right away. Hanger back. So I can play hanger back for one and then still play a rankle. Or we can just play statue. Nah, playing statue has to be better. Slow down the opponents. And then we can do some fun things with altar, sacrificing 1-1 one, one tokens from hanger back. Clear Revenants. Let's say we Rankle plus Revenant this turn. And then attack with both of them. And then don't sacrifice anything to Ashnod. But Rankle can force a sacrifice. And then we'll also draw since our opponent's taxed and we're not. And uh, no need to discard. Weather line triggers. And don't need to keep swamp. Okay. And we'll just send it back. Wait on playing a bigger hanger back. Opponent running collected company as well. So their curve must be relatively low. Great Henge is going to be pretty pricey since their creatures aren't huge. And an Elder Leaf Mentor. Alright, so the ground is getting stalled. But we have a few flyers to work with and a Cityscape Leveler. Could also be very exciting. So, let's see here. If I play Hanger back for four and play Ashnod's Altar, then I can sacrifice Hanger back, get two tokens, sacrifice the two tokens at six mana, sacrifice Ashnod and cast a Leveler. And then we have a Weather Light as well. Yeah, that sounds reasonable. So I guess X equals two here since it's double X. Play Altar. Don't need specimens since we have Revenants. And a Flesh Gorger could be fine. One more. And cast Leveler. And then between Tokasia's Welcome and Oracle, I guess we'll start with Oracle. And hit for eight. And then now we can make them discard since we're empty handed. And no need to sacrifice. Okay, that was a pretty sweet turn. Statue puts them to eight. And we have an active leveler. Ooh, Crater Hoof. Does that kill me? It's definitely gonna be close. So block. Paradise Druids, and then still take 26. All right, GG's. Wasn't expecting to be hoofed. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw, facing Rivas, so a Dragon Reanimator deck. My hand's pretty bad since we're missing early enablers for Ashnod. This is much better. 
two good removal spells, and then Jadar, if it sticks around, can keep providing zombies for Ashnod. So we will hit for one. Play Jadar. And then next turn maybe play a Tome and draw. Never mind. Try again. So regretting not just sacrificing Jadar now, since we could have gotten a Power Stone out of it. A Braid kills Ashnod, so I guess we're gonna try a different game plan. And a Tormenting Voice to discard a Doomblade, which is not particularly great in this matchup. Opponent has not played Rivas yet, but we have answers at the ready. And a Worm Coil we can also just play now. Could take a very aggressive line where I discard with Bone Shards and still try and play Worm Coil this turn. Maybe by sacrificing Solemn, that's still acceptable. See what we draw. Since we're not going with Ashnod, the Ghast lost most of its utility. So, opponent's at 24, that's 4 attacks from Worm Coil Engine. Opponent passes, and yeah, start by attacking. If they try and exile it, I can still sacrifice it with Phyrexian Tower, but it's just a Power Ward kill. That works. So that's gonna slow down our attacks. So if I play Tomb... I'm unable to play Ashnod unless I sacrifice a token here, which is probably not worth it. But I can play Tome, draw, and play like a Doom Dissenter, I guess. And we could play Key as well. Alright, so next turn I can play Ashnod, so draw with Tome. And see where we end up. Opponent unable to replay their commander for the time being. They may have some expensive dragons in hand, one of which we can answer. So start by attacking. Gutter Bones. So I could discard Gutter Bones with Key and then still bring it back. Just so the Key is tapped. And we can uh, draw with it next turn since we don't have a ton of other uses for all our mana. Crux of Fate to wipe the board was to be expected. Well, we can still draw with key. Inventor's Fair also close to being active. So we can do the Gutter Bones trick again and hit for two, or we can replay our commander, which may be better. Goldspan Dragon, that's a scary one. 
And yeah, it's no longer the nerfed version, so targeting it will give the opponent a treasure. And are they going to kill Ashnod again? Yeah, of course, Dragon's Fire. Opponent really does not like us to have our one drop. And do I want to use key here, discarding gutter bones? We can attack and get it back. Sure. So hit for two. Get back gutter bones. And then I can maybe sacrifice Gutter Bones to uh, Spark Harvest while Reaper is out. And then we can still draw with Tomb. Yeah, that seems fine. So they've got seven mana for an unbreakable bond to bring back Goldspan. Okay, so that now has lifelink. And they'll have five mana once the Goldspan attacks. So yeah, we're in a bit of trouble now. If our opponent has a good follow-up, need to find another removal spell. Thieves' tools doesn't seem incredibly helpful. So let's uh, think about our turn. If we do want to activate Inventor's Fair, that's four mana gone. We have five left, potentially six with Phyrexian Tower. So I can probably find an artifact that answers a gold span. Although ideally we get a more expensive thing that we play on the following turn. I think it's fine to discard the Thieves' Tools still. We'll keep Arcane Signet. Alright, go for the throat, answers a gold span. That helps. So play Arcane Signet. Attack for five. Get back gutter bones. Maybe better off killing gold span now. And then do we want to sacrifice Inventor's Fair? I think so. And a portal to Phyrexia seems like the obvious choice. Bolas of Citadel could also be quite nice. So those are the two main ones I'm looking at. But uh, let's go with portal. Opponent's got some nice creatures we wouldn't mind getting access to. And our opponent explodes, yeah, they know about the portal, and that's going to be too much for them to overcome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Tesseret, an artifact deck, and our hand's promising. We've got some early sacrifice fodder and some nice artifacts to ramp into, hopefully. And then connections, when played early, can also provide a ton of extra cards. Turn one Ashnod. Turn to Doom the Center. And then would love to hit our natural land drops as well. So next turn we have to play Shambling Ghast if we don't draw lands. So I can at least make a treasure. Yeah. 
and a pristine talisman for opponents. So they're also off to a nice rampy start. There's an island, so a Sundering Titan found its first target besides our own swamp, so hopefully they play swamp as well at some point. Okay, land is good, so now go for connections. And sacrifice our zombie. So if we make a treasure, we could already play Worm Coil Engine. Although we'll see what else we draw. Opponent has a Solemn to keep ramping. So that would probably get in the way of Ashnod if we attack next turn. And a Witching Well. Well, well, well. Land is good, so definitely want to make a treasure. And I think draw cards. No need for the extra token. We'll save ourselves a bit of damage. Playing a Worm Coil is certainly reasonable. Could also play Yawgmoth, play Shambling Ghast, and then give the Solemn minus two, minus two. But then we wouldn't have any creature left to sacrifice to Ashnod's ability. So that sort of defeats the purpose. Could just uh, cash in a Shambling Ghast for an extra treasure and a Power Stone. And then still play, uh, let's say, a Worm Coil engine here. Or we could just replay our commander. So let's say we play Worm Coil. Next turn I should still be able to play Sundering Titan, but unless they play a Swamp, that may not be a great plan. And there's Tesseret. So now we've got a nice creature to help us pressure their Planeswalker. Spider gives us a Power Stone, which we can certainly use. And our opponent gets back Solemn, which they can still play for free thanks to the affinity ability here. Alright, so once again draw and treasure. So our opponent did find a swamp now, so Sundering Titan's looking better. Okay, let's go after Tesseret. And it's Titan time. And we'll add a skeleton to the board as well. And then next turn Yawgmoth can help us draw a couple more cards. Mystic Forge is always scary, especially with a discount from Tesseret. And a Noxious Gearhulk. Takes out Titan, presumably. So opponent loses an island, we lose a swamp. <laughs> this is just the beginning. Okay, thief's tools to make unblockable could come in handy. Do I want to make a 3-2 token? Starting to run low on action, so I may have to. Go for the throat. Does not kill artifacts, as it turns out, so pretty awkward in this matchup. And yeah, Thief's Tools does not make my Worm Coil unblockable, so we cannot take out Tezzeret, which is really the goal here. I guess I could shrink down my own Worm Coil with the Yawgmoth, but then we're still not quite there. So, step one, play Yawgmoth. Can play the tools and equip our skeleton. And 
and send both at Tesseret. Opponent goes for a double block. That's acceptable. I think we pass it back, no need to replay Ashnod. Inventor's Fair can tutor up whatever they want, including something like a uh, Paradox Engine and Languish was likely to happen here. At least we can cash in our creatures for some extra cards. Village Rites, also useful, so that can sacrifice Yawgmoth. And a Dark Ritual can maybe turbocharge our next turn, although we're missing a big Curve Topper. Opponent's down to one card in hand, and it's an Emery. That one we can kill with a go for the throat at least. As uh, opponent finds more goodies, that Tazeret can also return. But they're just gonna plus put us to eight. So we'd love to find an answer to Planeswalkers. Could get back a skeleton end of turn, but I don't think that's gonna make a dent. Hang our back walker. Okay, I think we just draw for now. And weather lights, that's not quite what we needed, I'm afraid. So I can kill Emery. Maybe if Augur draws into something exciting, we still have a chance. But uh, yeah, we basically need to kill Tazarat here. And I don't have any way to do so at the moment. A Revenant's not gonna make a difference. If I sacrifice Solemn, I get to draw, so that's another redraw. And then maybe I should play a Weatherlight too, so that can also scry to help. So first we'll scry, then we'll draw. Diabolic Intents, that can find an answer. So I'll keep that on top. So Intents, Sacrifice Augur. The Scry doesn't matter now since we're gonna shuffle. And then we want to get something like Spark Harvests, which can destroy a Planeswalker. Dark Ritual. Play Revenants. Take out Tezzeret. And take out Emery. And a Cityscape Leveler seems lovely. Okay, let's see if our opponent can replay Tezzeret next turn. From the looks of it, they're gonna be a mana short. But if they can, we're probably just dead on the spot. Okay, pass it back. Next turn we can turn on our Weatherlight completed as a 5-5 flyer, but our opponent's at 50. So we also need to find another source of life gain. Since otherwise Tezzeret's just gonna zap us before we kill our opponents. And there's a land, so there's Tesserets with six artifacts out, and unfortunately that's gonna be game here. So yeah, we drew a lot of cards with black market connections, but it does come at a price. On to the next one. 
Okay, we're on the play facing Lisa, so black white, potentially angel synergy, potentially just some sacrifice synergies. Our hand sadly missing an early creature to sacrifice to Ashnod, so despite some nice top ends, I think we have to Mulligan. This is better. Turn one Ashnod, turn two Thrall. Leaves behind an extra token that can also make mana. Turn three, maybe Arena. And then we're making artifacts to help with Improvise to put our Herald in play. And also makes our Nettle Cyst bigger. So do we want Phyrexian Arena? Could also Warlock class plus level it up. So we have a couple options. Phyrexian Arena is probably going to be better long term. And then next turn we can cast Nettle Cyst using our Power Stones mostly. Diabolic Intent, always fun, gives us a ton of options. So play Nettle Cysts, play Warlock class, level up. And we can sacrifice the Germ token here to keep making more Power Stones. And I'm fine if Ashnaught trades at this point. Has served as well. But our opponent takes it. Okay, let's, uh, I think, level up. And find a couple options. Solemn for more ramp. To maybe set up a bigger play with Diabolic Intent. Sure. And then next turn it's going to be trivial to cast a Herald. As our opponent plays a Lisa. Solemn's not the best with a Lisa out, admittedly. So I may want to Diabolic Intent sacrifice Ashnod. And then find an answer for Lisa. And then can we still play Herald for artifacts? Five, six, seven. Might be a little short. So what if we just play Herald first? We'll get a card out of the opponent's hand regardless. So if I play Heralds, I'll still have enough mana to equip Nettle Cyst onto Ashnod, I believe. Hit for seven. And we'll not be sacrificing our Herald of Anguish. and discarded Linden, so they probably have a lot of life gain synergies mostly. Replace Overseer. Three mana left, and Valor stands. Nice answer for Herald, which gets exiled. Okay, so we probably need to answer Lisa here. And go for the throat is a clean solution. So, step one. Do I tap Mutavolt? I guess we can keep that untapped. Play a Solemn. And get a land. And then hit for 8, and then I may be better off just going Skeleton plus Diabolic Intent. As opposed to sending a Mutavolt, which I don't really want to trade for Overseer. And Solemn can draw. Could have actually played Skeleton and sacrificed that to Ashnaught, so I would have had one more artifact in play, so we would have dealt one more damage. So do we get a portal to Phyrexia, or maybe since our opponent doesn't have a full graveyard, go for Bolas' Citadel here, 
can take over the game by itself. And our opponent has seen enough. Yeah, that's understandable. But we were off to a great start this game. So, yeah, we got to see our Ashnod Brawl deck in action. And the games are always close and interesting, so it's definitely not the most broken commander out there. But it's certainly powerful if you get those early sacrifice synergies online and get to ramp into some cool artifacts. So I found the gameplay to be quite enjoyable. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.